Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Apes. Um, so today is Earth Day. So we got some Earth Day fun happening. Um, exam prep today looks like going over what the FRQs are going to look like on the exam and um, reviewing the, the populations unit. Uh, a lot of you reported that you really like making one-page study sheets for your populate er, for your review. Uh, so I'm going to be posting the objectives for the populations unit, and your task is to make a one-page study sheet for that. Um, so that's your exam prep. Uh, some more Earth Day fun happening though. So hopefully today's a little bit lighter, a little bit more enjoyable for you. Uh, but I would like to look at FRQs because that was another thing that we have, uh, a lot of people have been asking about. So, oh, wait, sorry. Coming back. One more thing. You should have gotten an email from the college board um, confirming your exams, I believe, is the language that was used. So it's probably from an advanced placement email address. Um, so... There were a handful of you that um, responded and like confirmed that you were going to be taking these exams. Uh, there are a much, much, many, many more of you who have not responded at all to that questionnaire. Um, it is it was sent to the email address that your AP College Board um, registration is through. So a lot of you didn't use your hair and emails for that. So please go check your email, find that one, respond to the um, to the questionnaire. They just uh, want to make sure that like you have access to that email address and you'll get the link to the exam when it's time to take the exam. So you should do that. Okay, so FRQ overview. FRQ number one is the design and investigation of FRQ. So with that, um, it is uh, presents you with an authentic environmental scenario accompanied by either a model or visual representation or quantitative data and may assess your ability to describe or explain the environmental concepts, processes, and models presented in a written format. Analyze visual representations of data analyze research studies that test environmental principles and describe environmental problems and or potential responses. Um, so a couple of things that I want to point out here. So it might ask you to analyze a visual representation of data. That could be a model. It could be a graph. Um, they did say that you are not going to be responsible for like making a graph in this exam, but you might be asked to interpret a graph. Okay, so make sure you know how to read a graph. Um, another thing, it could be a model. So the example that we have is, um, is a, like a, a model that we're going to look at. Okay. Uh, this is the first FRQ on your at home exam and it lasts for 25 minutes to write and then five minutes to upload. So with that, um, you can type your um, you can type your exam or you can handwrite your exam and then take a picture and upload it. Either one of those is fine. Um, I would like for you to like practice that once the practice um, comes up onto the AP website, which when that happens, I will let you know. So 25 minutes plus a five minute upload. There's going to be a timer on your screen and in that five minute upload period, it will turn red. Um, so it's not going to like beep at you. It's not going to be like five minutes remaining. Um, so you have to make sure that you're paying attention to that time. Okay. So, um, example number one is going to look super familiar because you already wrote this. Um, you wrote this last week. So this, it's your visual representation of, uh, data in this, um, or a principle in this example is the picture of the carbon cycle. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to like click through the examples to show you, uh, like to give you good answer uh, examples. Okay. 
So it says identify a process in the diagram that removes carbon from the atmosphere. So if we do that, we see that photosynthesis is removing carbon from the atmosphere. Um, you could have also said CO2 being dissolved in water. That also removes CO2 from the atmosphere. But photosynthesis was the big one. And then the second one says identify a process shown in the diagram that sequesters carbon from the atmosphere um, for a geological period of time. A lot of people wrote photosynthesis for this as well, but that doesn't last over a geologic period of time, okay? So for this, we have sedimentation happening down here where uh, the sedimentation is being locked into limestone, so like your calcium um, carbonate stuff that gets locked into and made into limestone over time sequesters carbon uh, over a long period of time. Another thing that you could have put was... Uh, development of fossil fuels, um, that also sequesters carbon over time. Okay, so the second part was a little bit more in depth. Uh, it says, based on the diagram, explain how the combustion of fossil fuels has led to an imbalance in the carbon cycle. A lot of you guys got this one too. So combustion of fossil fuels quickly releases CO2 that has been sequestered below ground for a long period of time, leading to drastic increases in atmospheric CO2. Okay, so you're taking that ancient carbon and releasing it all back all at once. Uh, next one, explain the role of decomposition in the carbon cycle. Uh, decomposition breaks down carbon and organic carbon, so carbon that's in a living life form, right? Um, all carbon is organic. I don't know why I wrote that. Sorry. Rah. Organic chemistry is the study of chemistry with carbon. Um, Oh, so uh, decomposition breaks down carbon that's in living life forms and releases it into the atmosphere as CO2 or deposits it into the soil. Um, so that was good. Um, some people put like it cycles um, nutrients and that's not really, it didn't, wasn't specific enough for the carbon cycle. Okay. Okay. Next one. And this is where I'm in the way. Um, Hopefully, I have gone away now. Um, so, scientists are interested in researching how CO2 in oceans is affecting its pH. They design a lab experiment in which they inject different concentrations of CO2 into water tanks containing calcium carbonate shells. The tanks were kept at the same cons constant temperature. After several days, scientists measured pH of the saltwater tanks and observed its effects on the calcium carbonate. Uh, so... Identify an independent variable. Most of you got this. Independent variable is the concentration of CO2. Um, and some of you didn't get it, but then when you wrote your control, you like controlled the independent variable even though you didn't recognize it as the independent variable. So the thing that it, with your control for part two, uh, that is always the group that doesn't get treatment or the group that gets like the placebo. So in this case, the control group is the tank that gets no added CO2. Okay. And then explain the effect of carbon dioxide on the pH. So carbon dioxide dissolves in the water and forms carbolic acid, which lowers the pH of the ocean. And then describe the effect of water temperature on the amount of dissolved gas. Uh, the lower the water temperature, the more gas can dissolve. So when your um, oceans get warm, the amount of carbon dioxide that can be dissolved in them decreases and your oceans become less of a carbon sink. Um, but as the temperature of water decreases, the ability of gases to dissolve increases. Um, describe how... The results of the experiment would change if the temperature of the tank was decreased. So if you decrease the temperature of the tank, more CO2 would be dissolved and your pH would be lower because you'd be forming more carbolic acid. And then the last one, describe how a decrease in ocean pH can affect marine organisms. A uh, decrease in pH could cause organisms that depend on calcium to make shells uh, to experience a higher mortality rate because of the low pH. Uh, the low pH would lead to an inability of the calcium to make calcium carbonate shells. That is not the best sentence I have ever written in my life. Uh, struggling there a little bit. But uh, more 
acidic oceans means fewer animals with shells because their shells dissolve in the acidic water. Okay, so that's example one. Um, it asked you to design an experiment or identify parts of an experiment. Okay, so example two is analyze an environmental problem and propose a solution. With this, um, this is free response question number two on the at home exam two. Um, so you are analyzing an environmental problem and proposing a solution presents the student with Authentic environmental scenarios accompanied by either a model or visual representation, so the same kind of um, diagram that we saw last time, or quantitative data. So this could be a table, a graph, um, something of that nature, and may assess student ability to describe and or explain concepts, processes, and models presented in written format. So can you interpret the data? Um, analyze vis visible res representations. Can you interpret the data and propose and justify solutions to environmental problems? Okay, we got four minutes to get through this. So model, diagrams, graphs, all possible to see in the second FRQ. This one is going to last 15 minutes, and you'll have a five-minute upload time at the end. So the second example is kind of long. Um, it's a lengthy FRQ. Uh, but you've seen part of it before, at least. Um, so the waste generated by humans is both an environmental and human health concern. Part A says many countries now use centralized sewage treatment plants to treat wastewater from houses and businesses. What is a goal of primary treatment in a modern sewage treatment plant? So this could be remove or this is removing solids from the effluent and using by using screens and settling um, so you're taking solids out during primary treatment part two asks about secondary treatment um, with secondary treatment you are disinfecting so secondary treatment disinfects effluent by using chlorine or ozone to kill pathogens notice i'm not just naming it right i'm not just saying it's disinfecting i'm describing the process a little bit okay Part three, many sewage treatment plants use tertiary treatment as a final step in wastewater treatment. Describe one advantage. So tertiary treatment, remember, is removing nitrogen and phosphorus from the effluent. And an advantage of this is it helps prevent eutrophication in the waterways into which the effluent is released. Part four says if a sewage treatment plant malfunctions or if low income areas lack sanitary waste disposal, raw sewage can be introduced into surface waterways, describe one potential environmental problem or one potential human health problem that can result. I read this wrong. I did both. Uh, so one potential environmental problem that can result from raw sewage and waterways is eutrophication and the development of dead zones. One potential human health impact is uh, outbreak of a fecal borne disease such as cholera. And then part five, identify one water parameter that can be measured to determine if there's raw sewage present, um, fecal coliform bacteria presence in the water, or saying like looking for E. coli in the water. Okay, there's a second part of this. So part two uh, is about municipal solid waste. It says United States Environmental Protection Agency refers to the trash or garbage that can be placed in landfills as municipal solid waste. It includes a bunch of stuff. Uh, look at this graph and tell me about it. So part one says describe the trend from 20, 1960 to 2015 in municipal solid waste generated. So with that, we're seeing an increase from about 100 million tons to about 250 million tons. Part two says uh, look at the, compare the trends in the total municipal solid waste generated and landfilled between 1990 and 2000. So although the amount of municipal solid waste increased from 1990 to 2015, the amount of the landfilled waste plateaued around 150 million tons. Part three um, says propose a solution to reduce the risk of flammable methane from the concentrating in landfills. And I wrote one way to reduce methane from concentrating in landfills is to collect the methane and burn it using it to generate electricity. And then part two says, justify your solution um, by explaining an additional benefit besides reducing the amount of flammable methane. 
So I wrote, generating electricity from methane reduces the amount of carbon emissions from other sources of greenhouse gases, such as coal and oil. Methane electricity can replace electricity generated by fossil fuels. Okay, very fast overview of these. Um, email me if you have questions. Come to my office hours. Happy Earth Day. Bye, guys.